Namaste. So today we're going to continue with Sri Lalita Sahasranam. Nama 102. Vishnu Granti Vibhedini. This means she pierces the knot of Vishnu. Well, why is it called the knot of Vishnu? Because Vishnu resides in the Manipuraka chakra, navel chakra, or the moving chakra. And just above that, there's another knot in the spinal channels, and that's called the Vishnu Granti. Now, Vishnu Granti, what does it signify? It means the attachment to a certain identity and especially a certain mood. It means attachment to sustenance. Vishnu is the sustainer, the maintainer. Huh? And so being attached to needing sustenance is a form of ego identification with the body. So the body needs sustenance, but the being itself does not. And once one becomes self-realized, one knows this, feels it for a fact, and then one feels independent of the body. See, this is an important step in the process of self-realization. So one must pierce through this Vishnu knot, huh? Vishnu Granti, and go on to higher states. This is why we often see that after a person passes the, the basic levels of human spirituality, of knowledge, knowing that, for example, I'm a jiva, I'm a spirit soul, I'm a conscious entity, separate from the body. But knowing is different from realizing. <laughs> And so once one passes the Brahma Granti, he knows he's a spirit soul, but he hasn't realized it. Once you pass the Vishnu Granti, however, you have realized it. You actually know. So this is an important milestone on the path. So once one passes this milestone, then he's really a sage. He's really a yogi. Uh, he can really say, I'm on the path to self-realization. Next, Nama 103, Agnya Chakran Taralastha. She resides in the Agnya Chakra, which is also known as the third eye. Now, this is the last of the six chakras, and this chakra belongs to the Guru. The Guru resides here in the third eye. And when one makes contact with the inner guru, see, the outer guru gives knowledge, but the inner guru gives realization. That's the main difference. So once you contact the inner guru, then the inner guru begins to guide your path. You start getting intuitive knowledge, not verbal knowledge, but just knowing this. I'll give you a good example. Over the last few months, I had been getting some lower back problems. I started feeling also very lethargic and needed to sleep a lot. And I didn't know what was going on. And so I meditated on it. And it came down to that my mattress was too hard and it was throwing out my lower back. Now, I've always slept on a very hard mattress just a thin mat, really, a couple inches of foam on a hard surface. So recently I got a new bed, which is made of cane, woven cane, a really nice bed, but it's a little uneven. And my old thin mattress was not straight. It wasn't flat. So something was throwing my back out of alignment. And then that affected my adrenal glands and my metabolism was in the bucket and like that. So anyway, <laughs> after all this, I got a new mattress. 
a really nice thick one, you know? I don't really like soft beds, you know? <laughs> because, you know, you know, the name of that demon that, that Narasimha killed is Hiranya Kashipu. Hiranya means gold and Kashipu means soft bed. <laughs> So anyway, I never really liked soft beds, but I guess at, you know, at age 74, you start to need a little bit more comfort, you know, just to maintain the body. So, okay, I got a new mattress and it's very comfortable. And I mean, instantly, within a day, the lower back pain went away. But more, more fascinating, what happened is, Goddess came into my lower back area and cured the adrenal imbalance. You know, how do I know this? Well, I just know it. <laughs> I just feel it. It's intuitive knowledge, it directly revealed by the Chaita Guru, Guru in the heart. So this is the kind of knowledge, this is the kind of thing, you know, that happens. I feel her in every aspect of my life. She's in my dreams. I mentioned that in a recent video. She comes in my dreams as the dream companion. And whereas she used to be very silent and kind of detached, now we have a very lively friendship, beautiful friendship, deep understanding, mutual understanding. You know, and in the dreams, we'll be in this or that situation and we'll just look at each other and smile, you know. There's this deep understanding and it's not at all sexual. It's real friendship and it's really wonderful. See, so she's healing me from within by dreams, by adjusting different parts of my body that I don't have conscious access to. You know, so this is the result of worshiping the Divine Mother. As she pierces through these different blocks and knots in the spinal channels, the sushumna, then she will adjust everything so that you have perfect health, so that you're not at all in distress, even in old age, and you can worship her comfortably. Huh? Now, there's some nice quotes about this. Saundarya Lahari says, I worship the Supreme Shiva, Paramang Shambhum, who abides in your Agnya Chakra, covered by Parachit on the sides, and having the splendor of billions of suns and moons. So this underlines the importance of the Agnya Chakra in the uh, process of adoration of the goddess. Uh, now this is not, uh, how can I say? This is not a statement describing some inner world, but this is a description of a stage of the yoga process. And we'll see in the series I'm about to start on the Lakshmi Tantra, that she describes very similar visualizations on uh, the path of meditation that lead to one realizing the goddess within. And here's another quote. You cannot see me with your physical eyes. I now give you divine eyes, the third eye or Agnya Chakra. So the Agnya Chakra is described in detail in Namas 521 to 528. So at the present rate that we should get there in about 10 years. <laughs> Don't hold your breath, right? <laughs> One more. Nama 104. Rudra Granti Vibhedini. She pierces the Rudra Granti. Now, what is the Rudra Granti? The Rudra Granti is the identification with ideas with thoughts, with cognition, ultimately with consciousness itself. So when one can pierce the Rudra Granti, he can rise to the Sahasrara. The Sahasrara isn't really a chakra. Huh? The other six are chakras because they're energy vortexes. 
But the Sahasrara is actually beyond energy polarities and even consciousness polarities, such as the subject and the object duality of consciousness. In fact, it's beyond duality altogether. And this is where Shiva resides. Shiva resides in the Sahasrara and Shakti tries to rise through the different chakras to unite with him. And the only thing that stops her is when we have an ego identification, which is a block or a knot. And so she respects that. If we have an ego identification blocking the uh, chakras or blocking the spinal passage, she won't, she won't continue, she'll stop. Now, the way people get in trouble when they practice so-called kundalini yoga, which is actually not really bona fide, <laughs> is that they try to force the arising of the kundalini while still maintaining the blocks. See, yoga is a process of will, and will means ego. So the more effort that they make to try to push her to rise up through the spine, the more trouble she creates at these different blocks, because really she wants them out of the way. And what is, so somebody is going to ask, well, how do you do that, right? Well, you can't do it. You can only non-do it. In other words, stop identifying, stop making the efforts. Stop creating the ego in those places on the uh, chakras. So what does that mean? It means one completely surrenders. This is sharanagati. This, this term is very much misunderstood by various yogis. Sharanagati means to go to surrender. Go and surrender. Sharana. Gati, huh? surrender, and gati means go. Or it means I go, actually. So I go to surrender, right? What does that mean? It doesn't mean, like some people say, that you have to do everything your guru says, right? <laughs> That's a very external, very superficial understanding of sharanagati. Sharanagati really means that you stop making efforts and trust God to take you to the ultimate destination. Trust the goddess. She wants to unite with Shiva. What's stopping her is our efforts, including the effort for self-realization. Now, I know this is counterintuitive, especially for Westerners. <laughs> They think, oh, I have to try really hard, you know. <laughs> but the effort involved in self-realization is really one of simply removing the different identifications and projections of the ego and making efforts to attain different desires and such. Just drop it. Drop it all. The example is given of the, the baby monkey versus the kitten. Uh, the baby monkey has to cling to the mother's back. We see this here in India all the time. The baby monkey has to cling and make an effort. You know, how, how monkeys jump and swing through the trees and stuff. I mean, they really do. The poor baby has to hold on for its life. And it's a big effort. And if the baby relaxes, he falls. But the kitten is picked up by the mother cat and just relaxes, doesn't have to do anything. Huh? And the mother cat will take it to safety or food or whatever the kitten needs. Huh? So this is Sharanagati, to be the kitten. I love this because I love cats, <laughs> especially big cats. And in fact, there's a shloka about this somewhere that the, the antelope is afraid of the tiger's jaws. But the tiger cub feels those jaws 
as mothers love. The same jaws that tear apart the, the antelope huh, give safety and protection to the tiger cub. So the same goddess who destroys even the most powerful demons also gives protection to the devotees who approach her with love and service and adore her as one's own mother. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.